hey guys welcome back on csr2 we are here and i'm going to be writing up the miles today uh new look for the chevy camaro obviously we have been using some elite points customizing our vehicles we're really eager to customize our vehicles we have the toyota and we're going to be racing uh mainly all these cars in this garage and then I'll be showboating some new cars that I did win from a crate drop that I opened. Some daily battles. Run up some keys. Yeah, that was a perfect race, my guy. Can you believe it? Talking about racing, that's a really, really nice looking car. And it's a unique one. It's a setup, just pretty uh, countermeasured. To talk about it, that car is just one of, one of a kind it's a it's a really pretty high quality car making it harder to kind of control too it's it's a upgraded vehicle you need to use a full re uh rev limiter on that it's, it's crazy not much i know about it We're in the racing uh, justice right now with the Camaro American Elite Eagle. Uh, what I mean is we have uh, possibly one of the fastest tunes for this Camaro. It's a light set vehicle with a, a heavy strategy on turbo and uh, transmission to tires. Not not really good good tires, but it's more mainly on the engine power uh, to distribute the power. We are running somewhat lightweight integers, so we keep our car pretty heads up on this. Uh, you see, racing with this Camaro, it's not really as to keep up versus ours, which makes up uh, more power. And we have the gear ratio changed up. It's kind of an add up of how much we're gonna make for the rotation. So we also uh, called in for the better tire, the better rims, I mean, uh, as for what we really want is just a clean swept car. We have it uh, to the tune to the tunage uh, in partial for uh, with game. It's not as low, but it is uh, dropped down to a few inch, inch and a half. We do have the Camaro ready and set. We have this Trinity Cup. We're we're not sure we, we want to do live races right now. I've been taking it up to the restoration rush with the Ferrari, so we are trying to all hold up with that. But uh, with the Ferrari, we we do not uh, really 
have a high enough grade, so we have to be making up the points. Uh, we're just looking at for a full restoration. Now, in accordance with how our Camaro is set, it is really quick. We just want to use the full gears that we can apply to. We always uh, use almost to the uh, stage six of the uh, speedometer for second gear because it is a gear that just overruns itself. Hear me out with the full bets. We'll be racing CJ's uh, FRS Rocket Bunny against a normal GR uh, Rocket Bunny. Let's talk about it. Which one's really quickest? It really seems like the Rocket Bunny is way quicker. Probably it's it's stance and it's stage six part. <clears throat> Not much to talk about really. It's just a uh, car short uh, and can cut through better through the air. It has heavy parts, but it's all uh, uh, kind of reciprocal to still be light. So all all the cut through maneuver is on as as pretty. Uh, balance through the middle of the car not really much to talk about it's a good good car um, I'm not talking about going up against a Ford or against a Mini Cooper but it, it's a somewhat of a reliable vehicle uh, comparing these two vehicles it's it's uh, still good of a car As I ask guys, uh, all I want is a subscribe, like to my videos, tell me what you guys uh, like about the videos I make, the car videos really, to ensure how much of a car can make, uh, ask me about really any car, I can tell you as for a fact, and for most it's a residual game of play, how much a car can make to how much you can put into a gear because of the pure image of a car or how heavy it is uh maybe other other problems that you see in your car reality wise maybe it's just going to be a new air intake or the engine cooling wasn't as right because of the cpu uh it could be better because its stance was just too low and you didn't have enough fitting parts on it. Most often than not, using this 302 boss that was bought, I believe I bought it 
is the one car that is a reliable and quick vehicle as to say it for a junction of its use not really of like how much of a car can be reliable even even for a daily but it is one of one of the craziest cars that is uh conducted or made so uh as for that it is just a really good car even in in game it's it's uh provided more of a better image and in reality uh obviously engine swaps is just as good best and better and fun As car culture is and how widespread it is, who, who here and really likes the Japanese cars? I mean, if you like anything else, most likely Italiano. I mean, there are the German, the Audi uh, TTS RS, the Audi R8. Um, most most of people really see the muscle car as the image you know it's it's the same car for seen as oh yeah it's the nicest it's built up on like prospect and how much you can really connect with a car and how much horsepower really makes up to the wheels uh most likely it's the interior the car you like it you you want to see it it's pretty good or maybe you don't even like muscle cars maybe you're more into the the engineering of almost um a greek nationalist vehicle almost almost to say we have any of these cars that that are of uh, uh out imported vehicles like the toyota 86 the lancer evolution we have a 488 more more american than anything the 488s by a uh, pista Spider is one car you can actually find bought here in the U.S. It's a one car uh, fits all. You can see it. It's more main industry. Anyone is really going to have it and want to drive it just uh, just as freely as you would want to drive an A86. Talk about the drift fans. Do I have drift fans? Who plays Torque Drift or or maybe um Car X Drift? Like, right now I'm going to take into consideration in making these diagnostics. I see that my pista isn't really quick. It must be the extra part I installed. It's not as quick. But I am going to rearrange some parts because I have been losing and I really don't like losing. So, let's see what setup is really better for fitting into a spider. I do have a lightweight system. Not as amp, but it is there. I'm not sure if the transmission is really better, but I do want to try and uh, jiggle or mess with the transmission. So we're going to keep it sane. Uh, as for the oil... I'm probably going to lower it. I don't really take up consideration for the tires, but it is better to probably upgrade them. Mm, as for now, we're going to stick with these, uh, do some tire adjustment, air, in, uh, air into it, and then 
we as for a fact we don't really need the nahas like i i subjected to creating a vehicle that i could withstand almost the full implement of power with air and sometimes nos isn't really to be needed in it so we're, we're just going to be working with that for now Now messing with the transmission, I do like messing with it obviously. Uh, I just like to get the more proper pronoun of the gear ratio just so it's stated better. Now let's check it out. This Ferrari, once again, is a very fine vehicle. The Pista is one of my favorites of the Ferraris. A nice red clean coat with the star tires. A great feature to add in. It really is this mid-engine, mid-engine, rear engine, uh, making it just a faster uh, appliance vehicle, I would say. Or, or it's able it's able to m move through transitionings better so it's actually quite inherited for the pista that it has a, a withstandable axle that's uh, not too long but it is kind of held versus having the engine up front I'm not sure what the last top speed was, but uh, I think here we did actually run it a bit quicker to almost 100 and 196, running it from 150, 168. So that's actually a better improvement. reason for the piece to not needing NOS is mainly because of room it's just a smaller fit into the car it's not really that you can't have NOS but it's because of the NOS's uh, provided image like it's just going to be an offset image due to its uh, small standard of a, of a vehicle that's gonna hold anything in it first besides a person so I'm not saying you, you can't have it, but it's, it's just it wouldn't fit inside a vehicle like this size behind behind here is just going to be offset. <coughs> buy some guys and buy some guys. Here we have an Audi, the beautiful Audi, uh, yeah, RS6, I thought it was RS5, but you, you can't see this car is actually way faster than the car, it's just not as good because of its gear ratio. As for launch is what I mean, but you, you can see it's a fast car.
That out is just way too quick. Having a heavy set Audi really doesn't make a difference. It's the shape of the car itself. That's the reason why it's actually held up better. It has air pushing down on the roof. Not so much as uh, most of these cars which push the air down and either would have a, a, almost a straight da uh, down to a push off from spoiler or rear of the end. Or almost a push back onto the vehicle's bumper uh, could almost slow it down. Uh, curling, curling air. Really, if we had a bumper like this, uh, a lower cut bumper, it has the round edge uh, to the sides, not to up down. It it would be fitted onto a Ferrari. It would be way way more handled. It'd be a better car, but other than that, it's just uh, the shape manufacturer itself and how they want the car. This is just uh, just as good, really. Car manufacturer put the holes on the side. It, it fits well with the image. It's a strategy car. It looks strategized to race, but it also brings in the feel of a space vehicle with these exhausts and inlets along with the nice color and fusions of the carbon and red it's really really good look on it obviously and we also have this here the roof open up and closes it's the only one i have right now yes this all pops out it's just quite adjusted of a nice vehicle. It's pretty nice. Uh, now, I, I will be showing you what really car is fit. So, I'm talking about a car you really want and having it race out on the streets. Most car manufacturers have a, almost a straight down uh, rear window or the diagonal is more cut shaped i don't really like that except for the frs really or the subi brz um i just hate more that a car other than a, a wide vehicle would have such a, a a sleek cut versus having a longer cut as an rx7 or this gr gr supra the gr supra if the Mustang was more cured as a cut vehicle versus longer, I think it would be most improved. Way more improved. But showing you guys, I do believe that the, the proper vehicles that do hold better as, as a shape versus how much power it is almost even as to say it's a bmw the bmw brand really has a a come a complete setup of a engine that can almost hold power but you really do need a turbo you could add a transmission upgrade you can have the tires added up and your car would be better just because of its of its thick axle versus the transmission the gear range is just going to be just as good and the shape is just uh, more better of an image especially for four doors that they have the four doors really just are contemplated and and they make their vehicles pretty wide so it more has space inside it it's just a better vehicle uh, we are going to be taking out the LB M3 GTS, but here for now um, it is the S2000 and the Bentley. Now, these are two obscured vehicles of shape, which actually hold better, but have two of the most opposite engines to even work on itself. Um, as per se. You could engine swap a Bentley and an S2000. 
no matter uh, talking about it because the engine placement with this VTEC on the Honda S2000 is just uh, way more strategized to have a shortcut spout that's going to fit into a car but with this along with the shape it's just uh, not as good you can have uh, better uh, extensions with that you can have the air intake popping out the uh, turbo popping out air intake leading back into the car fit that onto a Bentley <clears throat> and you have that as a preset uh, engine swap it's actually quite finest but with the s2000 it's not going to be as quite fitted you'll have some illegal parts sticking out what police don't like really as far as the shape of it it's just a more held standard vehicle it's going to be a better vehicle to even talk about saying that it's just able to hold power because it's always on a continuous stride where the power uh, with the installment we have is just going to uh, hold up to more of an image ver versus the slow density and how uh, on a stock S2000 is just having air bouncing and bouncing all over the vehicle. Bouncy, bouncy, bouncing. Yeah, bouncy. As this, we have the shape. It's kind of best. It would be preferred to have the yellow interior but less of the <laughs> fancy knickknacks you hear me uh, saying as why it's just a good shape because it has fine edges and it's kind of long back four doors long back with the four door actually fits better with a with the shape of its of itself as front end on hood it has the curvature sideways to sideways left and right and it's just that great of a vehicle to fit compact almost almost anything but it is luxurious so it has the mid console with fancy um cup holders lights you know people like to modify sunroofs sunroofs with light roofs um reason really is that uh i'd rather engine swap because the S2000 is a thinner piston combusted vehicle. It's just going to have a better hand handle system, especially more room. So your tires would be better. Your, your rims, your turning handling would be better because of the smaller engine. And this engine does make a higher resonation for the power, uh, which would really fit better into an S2000 with its gear range. But talking about the S2000 engine fitting in, I think, I'm not sure, V V6, V6, I don't know. But it, it would be, uh, as a preset, the extensions would fit in best, and it would actually be upheld. Uh, as as a Ford Mustang, the Ford Mustang um, has a gear ratio that kind of stunts itself. But if you shorten the gear ratio on it, on the Bentley, it's it's gonna hold way more better with an engine from the Honda. But as that, because of, of its gear ratio, it kind of stunts itself because of its heavy gears and long axle, not because of its image itself and why heavy it is. Uh, as for air, along the sides, it, it cuts out in a way, or once where, where door handle spectation is, it would cut more up and outwards, pushing air off of it. But air that falls down onto the back of the vehicle really just falls straight down because of its long back it has this little spoiler lip the duck bill which kind of is uh, an improvised image is just to make it look better but it does kind of uh, interfere but set off the slight image that you won't have air in the middle of the vehicle but air uh, pushing out with the exhaust so, I don't know if that's a cheat cheat to exhaust, air to exhaust, 
that way it all just air pushes into one direction from one direction but that's the vehicle itself the bentley continental speed is a, a really great vehicle i'm not sure what to do with it i'm not selling it um for the most part uh what i mean is customizations i don't know what to do i don't know what to do for customizations so let me know in the comment section if you really like the bentley what calipers should i run it with and and try and defy the logic help me out a little bit because colors make a difference as to how air can be uh pushed off the vehicle except with chrome with chrome is just um like a snug blanket fitting on you 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 really have almost no movement but you still you're still underneath and warm as for the paints we have the military gun metals yes we have polarized satins these are pretty great uh we do have the liveries the liveries are always fine i think we will be running it with a uh, solid liveries or um patterns liveries Some some materials are okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, some materials are just offset too, though, because like the opposite material, it wouldn't be as good looking, but it is a better help image. And I don't know, maybe maybe it helps best. Maybe it helps best. Now, as for these three vehicles, I am kind of naming them in their own, uh, in their own, uh, like saying what their itinerary or how their acting is, what what game they play on the as a street vehicle. I wouldn't say they're street vehicles unless they have stickers and decals like that r33 in the back that beautiful r33 <clears throat> but as for naming them i say they're typical to buy and most of these vehicles are kind of ease set up shop cars and except for this 2000 as for uh tires and the paint job itself it doesn't really uh, make anything else best except for its paint job which we have in the pearl blue but changing it up a little calling it a junction vehicle which is an easy buyout vehicle to have but then uh, just because it's set up you would rather have it looked upgraded and most people really would have a upgraded rather than having it be just a subtle nice uh sleek vehicle we will be uh changing paint jaws we will be uh changing some of the rims adding a wide body to these cars uh i just care for a fact that i calling them a junction vehicle is uh someone that will buy a vehicle buy this vehicle they would make it look to the best of it of it of its shape of how it can be and i say it because these cars have the most uh, mod, uh modest act up of a look they kind of look like almost speed racer buggies or buggers buggers yeah buggers great he said buggers well the only real person that's gonna hate are the police and that's because i'm loud fast and loud so really i just really like that this car is uh looking more like hot wheels setup so customizing it is just a, a better spirit look when you call it a junction car 
and really as what I look to see what a junction car is is either the axle length is just as long as to a normal vehicle or shorter or it has uh, more than what it can hold like the double splitters uh, many lights or fixtures it has a single a single exhaust system this one will have double but uh, I I say for that is just because it has the rear the rear bulb lights it has the trunk fitted uh, just to matching it's almost all matching it's lower to f match with exhaust and talking about it it's just uh, not good of a car really but it, it just wouldn't be as good unless you have your own spaz to it. This here is not really as much for a junction vehicle, but uh, most people do customize them like junction vehicles. Uh, by that I mean the rims are almost off-putted. They're not as heavy customized as mine are, but uh, off from the fact you, you would most likely see them with uh, a more shape than many arms as i call them i call them arms from the from the middle to the outer rim i just like many arms so uh really i i, I say see this better looked as a junction vehicle rather than any other car because it's just a, a daily vehicle that almost anyone could have but not really many people have so it's more unique this is uh why i say a race vehicle or street car racing street racing versus um a drag racing or versus a cruising car because you'd expect this to look more quicker, quickest. It's, it's just that great to like expect how much a car would look because of its stickers, because of the body kit, or even how much better it looks with better rims. Uh, just with these default rims, it's just okay with it. You're, you'll you'll see you'll see what I mean by fast, but it's not fast. It's just. You know, with the rims, I'd rather prefer other rims to make it quicker. Not not that it adds horsepower, but the lightweight duration is just better. It's not lightweight. These are the lightest rims you're gonna take off with a with a R33. But I'm trying to see heavier rims. Let's get out with it. Let's race the M3. Here we are in the live races itself, the daily race live, being lively with other contestants. And most of these people was busy. There's a junction car, that Corvette. That's what I like, actually. The most uh, shaped image of the car is really uh, how even seeing it would be junction, but not, not really the Cobra, but more of the Corvette. Just because of its length and fit diameter, this I don't I don't really consider a junction. I consider it a drag or race type, depending on how it's customized. Most often than not, Now, don't hate me, but when I say that it's a drag, it's, I see it as more that it's quickest and it's complemented because of its engine power. 
because of its look it's just more better to say that it's gonna fit better with the drag tires it's gonna be more racy not that it that it fits into its into its category of looks but racing seeing it race i wouldn't call it a street race vehicle just because so many people use it often that it is not even anywhere near as a junction vehicle or or dra uh, as a racing vehicle i mean um it's just because of its body modded types it's just more able to look better and able to have um a better look than what you usually see buying from the store with body kits Now with my junction, my junction car racing the M3 GTS, really it's it's pretty hard. It's one of the hardest looking vehicles that that looks best as as to what it sounds as. Uh, mainly because of its V6 uh, entrepreneur look and how it settles in for the M3 and then if it's more correlated with an engine or t to a car that is just added up to have a better look system <clears throat> it just fits more better and you, you can even add up with NOS that the car is just equivalent to have a, a better suited image for itself. The for, uh, Ferrari, really, really to say, we have the F250, uh, 250 GTO. <clears throat> Uh, it, it is more fitted like junction I say that because it always has uh, more finer edged lines that are either long curved or uh, shortcut speed as I say so the front is just low and crazy edged that I, I would say it looks more like a junction car itself and 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 with that fact in reality you can add the wide body kit you can have better looking rims put 22s keep the tires as sane but uh make them thicker and it'd be a pretty nice width and to correlate i do say junction cars and the timeline of a junction car uh, would be a retrospect of a vehicle that brings the vehicle to the future punk look this is not this is not no junction car this is the uh, race specialty of a vehicle we have the bright color in case we ever wanted to put sponsor stickers on them we have the carbon fiber and just to keep it flashier we have a red interior <clears throat> we do put this car on a high top uh, look just for itself and it, it really fits better with the uh, fitted uh, engine <clears throat> and power that it holds itself so that's just that on its saying on its saying that the car is just better to hold itself up We have race type, um, more to say drag vehicle, just because it would be suited better. But it is a drift vehicle, as I would state, more than junction or drag or street racer. 
or street group a uh, street street group is just as good as drifter but um uh, it's just more of a cruising vehicle state stating that uh the camaro actually is different it's more of a drag vehicle uh it is likely to be not cruising just because of its high power re relevance it's just a quicker vehicle uh, with power but this one is quicker because of its power and gear ratio lightweightness uh, taken into account it's, it's going to be uh, more upheld but the, the Camaro is uh, as relatable to say it's it's a racing vehicle that'll match with any other car uh, if you really want to race with most cars not with special cars like uh, as for say well one car that would go up best up against this rocket bunny well would be a nissan g35 or um talk about it talk about it uh, an SUV Grand Cherokee Jeep um, really is just better stated here we have we have the typical junction car um, I say that because uh, it's just fine edged its power uh, cures the car almost so it can be either slower than than it can be or just quicker than air so you're really gonna see this car different and it's just gonna sound just greatest as it would be just even letting off off the line so the race vehicle would just be it'll be just as typical saying it's it's good to see it even going slow and you can hear the power it's a rush so it's that good of a car i would fit better rims on this but keeping it as is this just more set to the uh, for a drag vehicle where we have matching green on green when we're just customizing it saying like that would we'll make it look better for drag and then keeping it with the dark gray dark silver uh just to say that it's going to be cut through edge uh, faculty of a vehicle we do have the red interior keeping it um kind of a, a sleek design it's not going to be fancy but it's sleek design to fit its rocket ship look as you see here uh, well it's kind of high end for rocket ship Rock, rocket ship if you see really it, it's really um, just better if you have like plain metal plating so as what we have in here in the 250 rocket ship it does have the two-tone but i still would call it a uh, better of its look just because of its hell design it's a fit in type of vehicle and then it fits in with the outer exteriors uh, as what you see really for the restoration really it's exact opposite viewing the previews it does bring it up to a different type of look for say it has a some type of quilt um edged leather and then it's black so if it matches to a pretty high-end look not fancy i wouldn't say fancy but it is more of uh as today's vehicles like the dodge charger the corvette Stingray 2021 20, 2018 I can't leave Oh 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 This is the typical rocket ship But it's more of its racing type It's not really drag I wouldn't talk about it being drag, but here we have the interior setting it to look more of a racing feel as a four-door seater. We have the back seats for comfortability, keeping it still with the racing edge look. 
we can add any type of rims it will really be more of a racer look versus uh, if your car was messed up like a different colored shade um body part i think then it'd be more rat rod slash junction car as i say junction car um it's just the type of look but really that that one piece i say changes it differently it changes it way differently just because of its high height uh wise and uh edged areas versus the frs the frs one edged piece it's gonna look just like a rundown car but still still best to be used on a racetrack here, here we are going to use this here Evo. Um, one of my fastest launches compared to the R35, the tunage system. I can share with you both the tunage system. And really it's surprising on how much quicker this one lets off the line. Although we did tune, we did tune the R35. I can't remember. I think they are pretty similar, but the gear ratio shifting with the Evo Lancer is a it is not is not quicker than the R35, but the gear ratio because because one's different off by a simple adjustment, um, it it does have a second the second gear um, quickest to actually re-inherit the horsepower here we is looking for races I'm not sure if many people are gonna want to race Pardon me, pardon me. Oh, we do want to wait, uh, race this Camaro. that guy can't believe we lost that we do have these twins right here we have Quan demon side we have a far Mario these guys these guys have the nice sleek red paint job the lights the the front air intakes do look nice on Chevy's builds. It's pretty dope. The Acura NSX. We have that one. Racing a competitor. Uh, what a great car. I just, I, I don't really like NSX. Uh, for the faculty of how they made the car. It could have been shaped differently. More like a backwards Ford uh, GT. Oh, oh, or mixing with an amphibious vehicle. It's, it's my YouTube has recommended the amphibious shark looking vehicle with fins at the front of it. That would be a smackdown. But not really fins. Just like. A giant body part that goes to uh, the door. That Camaro does uh, 
state its slower part. The other Camaro was quicker. It's mostly mainly on shape. It was just wider, wider and low enough. Uh, the diffusers at the top, at the front, really do just um, put it better. It can collect all that air, just way better. The sec, the second one uh, reason is just uh, missing air intake. So it's not gonna have the full air uh, put in. It's just short and it's clear. So he he probably has the the set one or set three. Uh, transmission's probably still heavy, or still heavy with his upgrades. Not that he doesn't upgrade it. He just probably has it super heavy. Now, with what I really want to do is just improve any any of my car cars that I have. Uh, with the Evo, I'm not sure if I want to do it right now. But knowing about it, uh, how I configure it is, I hear the rotation and justify the gear ratio to that. Uh, I'll be doing a race for you guys to hear how the gear, ro uh, how the rotation to make up for the gear really could work. All it is is in camshaft. So, uh, hearing uh, how much amp that the pistons do is how much rotation you get to the camshaft, which is more of a, a magnetic equalizer for the transmission not that it can be more power is that things don't fly out of the car more more or less is what to understand i think except for the frs which you would want to upgrade from start is that the inner camshaft with the applied uh, outer piece that looks that sticks out uh, needs to be added because it's a equalizer weight of course but then with that equalizer weight that installment specifies equalizer so that your power can be already in residual to how fast the rotation is created. So uh, when when that happens with the FRS is that with the ins without the installment that the power can be upheld but it will be stunted not like gear range but for engine to to air intake so the air intake wouldn't go into the engine as good and can overheat the engine like that. Kind of what we're having here, except with all the upgrades on the Evo Lancer. I mean, we do have the extension for air intake, I believe, but it, uh, because we still have low uh, quality upgrades we haven't upgraded this much so we, we could either pro install and decrease air intake upgrade for engine and air intake so leaving it with a high resonation that keeps all all the all the um, fuel the oils inside either as hot but uh, will be overrun to engine power depending on how you of course use the engine but if you are doing it correctly you're overrunning the engine power uh, you should have a cleaner swift movement inside the pistons and with the air intake just because we have the uh, least of the upgrade so 
air is just gonna be continuously passing uh, past the air intake itself, but it can also just be as there for engine cooling, the coolant itself, the coolant itself, parentheses or brackets, is is that the engine cooling is just gonna have a pure rush. It's a pure rush instead of having air that or instead of having the air intake with the wall uh, which behind it air cooling would be kind of offset and have bubbles just because it's hot it's next to the engine but that's how i can easily describe it for you guys <clears throat> damn mimicking with my response uh, response uh, as uh, my Camaro, the evil would still be winning. The evil would still have a, a better lead. That's my quickest car, as for what I can say. That is pretty crazy. It it would be keeping of rev more quicker to almost a uh, fourth of a rotation faster versus the Camaro would be doing almost. Uh, six or seven of a rotation and then um, really it's mm, my power judging to how much of wheel spin uh, I would need to configure that so my Camaro would have a catch-up sense and almost be just slowest but or kept up as as the distance would be stated like how we kept with distance between the Camaro, but we would have closer and almost a better justification of keep up versus a, a standard of racing agility. As you see there, we were racing the Camaro. We were just trying to see if we can keep up to a standard of how much horsepower we can make to the engine to keep up our speed next to him. But you can see that the fifth gear does uh, be faster. Uh, it, it does have a, a lighter weight resonation <clears throat> in the middle and just equal length of teeth versus having longer teeth or shorter teeth with lighter weighted uh, gear in the middle. <coughs> <coughs> so uh, like that we're making a better a better rotation to the camshaft, not to the transmission. And like that, we're gonna be making horsepower just as great, not quicker, but just as great. Now the Audi R8 suit uh, upgraded, tuned just as I would please. Now it, it would have a better option to actually gain speed because of its power can be held and almost provided best through gear ratios like how I was saying with the Evo but uh, because of its shape it's just longer but even as is it would have a better keep up and kind of have a gradual better amp and I think it would actually surpass it, it would surpass depending how, however much of the rotation can make for our gears and how sh early shifted we make our car go into it. Uh, here we have the Infinity, the Q60. I don't see much of those as often anymore. Now, uh, now from before, I would race with my Camaro, and the Q60 had almost no chance, but it was great on the launch. 
our coverage is re uh, our Camaro's recovery was just best. We're in the elite level 15 with our Camaro. I'm not sure what that is. And that was two days ago, actually. Let's go see. Let's go see the crew and how they're doing. Maybe we'll go see um, one of them. One of them. Jonas. John is continuously making J's. Doesn't seem like much has changed. We're all at zero, except for me. Really, how how much gas do you need to buy, or is it on the closest time limit to having a better trajectory for your high speeds? Steadfast, faster than your car's race time. We're gonna kick you guys out. I'm sorry. Remove him. Only can be one. Here, I have my YouTube channel. Uh, we have a slogan. We have the logo. Uh, this is a Spanish translation and English. See sign back and forth with cars. Celeraciones. Uh, I, I say more. It's it's a rhythm algorithm. A rhythm of race between cars so uh, yeah we're there on the on the T on the cross
Let's check out what we can do with the GR Supra itself. Or maybe we'll upgrade the S2000. So we're readjusting the parts, obviously, um, for this point in the game, uh, it does recognize a refitted part, so that's really what we did. It's not, it's not a cheat, it's not a cheat, we're just making sure the car can be fitted with bolts and knickknacks, keeping it stride. Now that's it for the upgrades. I'm not sure what we can do. We'll be test running that. Now that that actual part right there from six gear shifting from fifth, uh, I noticed it right then and there uh, because we didn't have the proper add-on with the implement of air. It was needing to uh, control itself after a shift shifting from the gears. It's really gonna st uh, stud itself uh, on providing how much of the weight can be put in or how much of the weight can be re advanced. So the the full power from the engine was actually different. It was way different to kind of make an agility look on itself. And just with the air intake itself, it was kind of it was kind of helping with the engine add up. It was different, but um it, it, was, it was just because we didn't have that proper amount of air intake. Dang, now that really doesn't help. We lowered the miles per hour by a couple seconds or, or by a couple miles per hour.
that was better and thanks with this car and we had a better specification to at least coordinate how much as far I know this car has the better acceleration because it's a race type of body kit and then with engine power province it's uh, a more held power <clears throat> and using the gears you can surpass the limit of its stunted uh, growth for a rotation so what that means is that unlike most cars that do an over excessive amount of rotation but then because of gear ratio it might be more of a rotation to the camshaft versus of how much the the can or to the gears so rotation to the gears is based on how much power the camshaft already made as a rotation so th this car actually it infers that it has a certain amount of power because of its close calls on the camshaft uh, ratio that to the gears it's going to have uh, a needed gear ratio that holds itself better accounted. So, uh, shortening the gears to almost certainty, you'll have a, a better acceleration. Uh, to almost lengthening the gears of how much you can fit into itself. Um the the gear ratio will obviously be a faster gimmick on itself so uh you you can have the shifting power and then the car is already shaped but light enough to cut through air taking in air it'll have more than enough and using it as power it'll be more provided like a computer Uh, doing that so with our car we actually justified it to say our car is a keep up of its better na uh, nat national image the GR Supra uh, as a second uh, mock uh, reindustrialized vehicle factory um, to say the second one has a better keep up scenario versus the smaller version what we have the smaller 2020 2019 um we were able to see how much amp the car can make uh because of that that vehicle has a better timing state state our car is actually able to hold itself to to power and then with our gear ratio it holds itself to the power to to the gears the power holds itself to the gears so what we need to base ourselves off of is our earliest timing to shifting
suspension. We lowered the air intake, but keeping it with a mild air intake that it can use. Uh, we slightly just upgraded some of the parts, add, adding up the parts. Um, what I really want to do is, well, reapply that. I'm going to reapply that. Um, well, what was different was just the the fuel sludge itself wasn't holding up to standard. It, it would be just heavier and uh, depending on how much power we put in, it would shake the vehicle, kind of dislodge some of the bolts and parts. It could um, almost dislodge itself from the engine or from the engine bay. So as from that, um, we actually took off the 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 fuel drip pan uh, piping. Uh, just because of the power system itself um, What happened was that well when we would use it 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 would actually just have a, a smooth it, it would have a smoother output, but then using it it would be uh, more it, it would have kind of kind of a ruined system with air intake not being as strong e even even to the event that we were using good horsepower to kind of use suction so what we did was when we did degrade the air intake it was just as smooth but keeping more air into it uh not that it was doing anything to the oil the oil behind it that in the station pod but it, it was just less air being kept up in the front and moving everything back out through the canards. Uh, that is it for today, guys. Hope you guys liked the video. Uh, like, leave a like button. Let's try and get to uh, 512,000 likes on this video. Uh, and enjoy the rest of you guys' week. Thanks, guys.